I'd like to call a meeting to order. Um, we'll open up with Liquor Control Board. Call the Board of Liquor and Tobacco Control to order. I need to see this. Sarah, would you like to step up? Any agenda changes or additions? There are changes and additions. Um, I'd like to add renewals for Rock Art Brewery and POM Enterprises, which is Beats on Main. Okay, thank you. Jesus. Um, <laughs> that's a really good one. <laughs> um, I'm sorry. Travis, and Laura, I forgot to ask if you were ready. I guess you are. Yes. 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 Sorry. We had to let you know. Yep. Um, like to approve the minutes of the March 20th, 2023 meeting. To your motion. I'll make a motion. We approve the minutes of March 20th, 2023. And a second. I'll second. Thank you. Got a motion and a second. And all those in favor? Aye. 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 It's approved. Thank you. And <coughs> go ahead to the license. Uh, so there are liquor license renewals for BizRight Pizza Company, which is Hoagies, the Bombastic Industries, which is uh, 10 Railroad Street, River Arts, and Walgreens. And then the two that we just added for Rock Art Brewery and uh, POM Enterprises, which is Pizza on Main. So I hear um, a motion to accept. Are we allowed to ask questions? Yeah, we can do that. Oh, River Arts, do they, is it for wine and cheese parties or something? Um, that would be a question for them, but I believe so. Yeah, I figured that. I'm just curious. Oh, it is. Come on, Patricia. That's what I figured. Oh, Patricia yeah. Pollock. Yeah. That's what I see you saying. So just uh, so just for the people on Zoom, um, Trisha Follett was saying yes to that question Laura asked. Well, I guess since we're asking questions here, um, the Walgreens, the Walgreens is closed. <laughs> so is this an application that goes with the building or goes with the business? Um, it goes with the building. I'm a little surprised that they s sent the money in and applied. I don't know if they're. Hopeful they will reopen at some point. I don't know, or or if corporate doesn't know that they're shut down. But I got an application, <laughs> and I got money, and I got an email from their attorney about it. So I don't know. So if, so if another business were to open up there, this would not follow through. No, nah, okay. it it just goes for Walgreens in that business. Okay. And even if they open up someplace else, it wouldn't follow them. So liquor license are non-transferable. Correct. Yep. Correct. Jason, were there any issues with any of these liquor licenses? No, no issues. Okay. Did we get a motion yet? No. We did not. I'll okay. make a motion we accept these uh, applications for liquor license. I'll second. Got a motion and a second. All, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Okay, that's passed. Approve new liquor license requests. So there are two new liquor license requests that are sort of renewals, but they're not because you can't transfer your license. So there's Vermont Harvest Catering, which is um, is the Ryder Brook Golf Course. They had been operating under a different um, liquor license name, and the Oasis LLC which had also been operating under a different license name. So not necessarily new business, but new liquor license applicants. Do I hear a motion? I'll make a motion. We ex uh, ex approve the new liquor license request, the two new liquor license requests. I'll and second. We've got a motion and a second. Any discussion? Any uh, concerns, Jason? Oh, there he is. OK, thank you. All those in favor? Aye. 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 It's passed. OK, tobacco license. There is just one renewal for Bombastic Industries LLC, which is 10 Railroad for tobacco. A motion to approve? Oh, I'm just curious where. Um, 
it's a, a restaurant, so, is it, so they can allow smoking? They sell cigars there. They sell cigars. There's a store Thank you. I was just a little confused because of the, why they need it. Um, I'm sorry, go ahead. I'll, I'll make a motion to approve the tobacco license for Bombastic Industries. Thank you. I will second. Got a motion and second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. It has passed. And last is special event per application? No. Nope. Nothing? Okay. Hmm. I'll make a motion we adjourn from liquor and control to tobacco control. I will second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. And so we're on to the meeting. So we're done with that. Thank you. Thanks, Sarah. And I'd like to open the select board meeting at, what is that, 536. And any agenda changes or additions? There are just one uh, addition. If we could put uh, for item number three, uh, adding in a pavement cup application from Soulmate Brewing. Okay. So between three and four, or before two, two three? And three? Okay. Before we get in all the other. <coughs> all right. Thank you. I'd like to approve the minutes from March 20th, 2023. Do I hear a motion? I'll make a motion to approve the minutes from March 20th, 2023. I'll second. Okay, got a motion and a second. Any discussion? No. Nothing? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, motion passed. <coughs> New business, public input request for improvements on Vermont 100A and Stafford Avenue. So we have gentlemen here tonight uh, representing the AOT, their consultants for them, and they're going to speak on behalf of the uh, improvements to the intersection of Stafford Avenue and the uh, truck bypass. If you could introduce yourself before sure. you start, thanks. Um, my name is Theron Matthews, and in the corner there is Steve Ireland. We both work for McFarland Johnson. Um, we've been hired by uh, Vermont Agency of Transportation to gather data on this intersection of Alternative Vermont 100 and Stafford Avenue. This intersection has recent crash history, and as a result, there's been interest in improving safety at this intersection. So we've had correspondence and input from the Loyal, um, the Loyal County Planning Commission, Vermont Agency of Transportation, and a few of the property butters so far. Um, we are here today to seek the same from the town. Um, some of the data we have collected so far has been background information, existing conditions at the intersection. We've reviewed previous select board meetings <coughs> discussing the intersection, and we've also reviewed data provided by VTrans, which includes traffic counts, a traffic, traffic signal warrant analysis, and we've also reviewed crash data at this intersection. Um, over a three year span, there have been 10 crashes, two of which included pedestrians, and one of which included cyclists. Um, we've also reviewed the, we've gone over the Morristown town plan itself and the roadway policies. And we've also gone over the walk bike safety action plan that was done by local motion and was supported by VTrans. Um, at this time, we are collecting data, uh, but not making any decisions on solutions or alterations to the intersection. We're here to get recommendation from the town in the form of the recommendation letter, which I believe we've provided. Um, and that recommendation is whether it is in favor or against the improving of the intersection facilities. Uh, we gave you a template for it, but you're more than welcome to give us something completely different. So this wasn't the template, the letter. Um, that is the template. That's letter. the template. Okay, thanks. Um, so, if the town decides that they support improvements to the intersection, then the project will continue through the process. 
If the town decides that they support improvements to the intersection and they'd like to include pedestrian improvements in that um, in that support, then further discussions with VTrans will likely take place. And if VTrans agrees to the intersection improvements, uh, they will likely require that the town construct pedestrian facilities of their own on Stafford Avenue in order to interconnect the pedestrian facilities across the intersection. Um, and if the town is not supportive of the improvements to this intersection, then this project will likely die after we submit our report. Um, if there's any questions, feel free to ask me or you can open it up to the public. Anyone? Travis, Laura? I'll yeah. listen to this. I've got, <laughs> you question? Yeah, I've got a couple. Um, so if we gave support to this project tonight, would it come back to us again for another approval at a later date? Yes, I believe so. I mean, we would submit our report and then it would be in VTrans's hands to reach out to you if that's the case. So this wouldn't be the last time it's going to come here? Correct. Correct. Okay. So if we, if we do support also, what's the financial obligation we have? Um, it's unknown at this time. Hmm? Yeah. And, and you could, at some point, you could stop as well. Okay. okay. So do you, the study you're doing is being financially supported by us or by the state or by? By oh, VTrans. By VTrans. Yeah. Okay. So you said there's been 10 crashes there, highway accidents in the last year, did you say? It was uh, over a three year span. Over a three year span. So how does, how does that compare to, you know, without a comparison, it's hard to know what 10 means. Right. So comparing um, it to where the light is down on Bridge Street? Um, I'm not exactly sure, but I would say over the <laughs> five year span, a crash per year is like the cutoff point. Um, this obviously is overshot that. Yeah. And I know there's there... been a big concern about pedestrians there. Yes. For sure. I know, uh, yeah, MSI, one of the property butters, has been very vocal about this whole process, too. I assume there will be pedestrian lights going in as well? Like um, crosswalk lights? It, it all depends on what um, okay. ends up being the final decision with you guys in the state. Right. I have to say I saw a child hit there bounced off a um, hood of a car and you know I made her call the ambulance uh, and she was okay and you know young kid trying to get to work at price chopper yeah um, very innocent situation though you know the woman just didn't see her and, yeah because she was tiny so it's there's it's definitely really bad over there Eric did you have something you wanted to add to this no <laughs> No, I, uh, I had an opinion at one time when I was on the board. I no longer have opinions. <laughs> <laughs> so I got one more question. I remember when there were no lights in Morrisville. I'm sure there's many people in this room that do. This would put uh, one, two, three lights on that bypass. Would there be, would you expect coordination between the lights? So if I'm traveling north and south and I get through one, would I likely get through all three? It's, it's likely the distance between them is so great, coordination will help. Okay. But, okay. but we, if a plan comes through, we're not stuck we're not accepting not. that plan. Yeah. That's right. correct. Right. Not no. this time. Not yeah. this time. Right. There's no financial obligation right now. Okay. Right now, it's, it's study phase. So you, would you just want approval from us to conduct the study? <coughs> yes, we kind of just want to, we're just collecting everyone's kind of input. Okay. And that letter would be like whatever your input would be into this on whether you support it, like whether you support trap, like safety improvements to the intersection or not. But it's, yeah, it's not a, you know, lock and key decision. It's just the information. Right. I think the information will be helpful in us taking enough, if the next step is there, to take that one. So, yeah. yeah. Not, so do you, study gives us more insight into the issues. Yeah. Yeah. Do we, do you need a motion for this? Probably be helpful. No? No, I don't think so. I, We're just looking for a letter of support. So if you want to do with oh, yourself a motion yeah. to provide a letter of support or a letter of not support, either is fine. Okay. It's your choice as a board. All right. Gotcha. Great. Motion. 
Yeah, Judy can write a letter. <laughs> I, I've Judy, always loved Yeah, you guys can do it. You go ahead. We got time. You're on the side of a motion. Okay. Okay, I you can make a motion to uh, that the town write a letter in support of the proposed project at the intersection of Stafford and Vermont 100A. Have a motion of second. I'll second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 It's passed. Thank you. Thank you. Judy, we'll uh, draft the letter off from the template here and have that ready for your signatures later this week. Okay. okay. <laughs> Sorry, one last question. What's the timeline? Like, would we see results from this report? Uh, oh, well, the report itself, when we hand it to VTrans, will be in the end of June. Oh, that quick? Yes. Great. <coughs> Thank you. Next on the agenda, um, approve Oxbow field use applications. This is a, a request to use the Oxbow Park uh, for an annual event. Tom Moog has been a sponsor of for several years now, and he is here tonight to speak to that. Hi, Tom, when you come up to the microphone, just introduce yourself, please. Thank you. Hi, my name is Tom Moog, and I own Moog's Place right here in Morrisville, downtown. On Saturday, we just celebrated our 12th anniversary here. We're Excellent. very proud of. I have done personally 10 events so far in the Oxbow Park in the 12 years that I've been here. Eight of those events I've done with my business partner. Uh, together we own the Oxbow Music Festival. Um, it's a great event we do to bring people to our town. Uh, we have food trucks, we have live music. Um, it's a day out for everybody. Um, this year we'd like to have three planned events. First one is a, a one-off on July 29th. We're um, gonna do a show called Summer Jam 73, <laughs> which is basically a reenactment of a famous concert that happened 50 years to the date um, in Watkins Glen, New York, with the band, the Allman Brothers, and the Grateful Dead. So we want to give everybody that experience one more time 50 years later on July 29th. Um, August 19th would be our seventh annual Oxbow Music Festival. And September 16th would be our second annual Keep On Growing Festival. Great. Does anybody have any questions for Tom? Uh, just curious as to why um, your closing times are different. So 10 p.m. is the noise ordinance in town. Mm -hmm. um, not so much anymore because all three of these events are on a Saturday. Uh -huh. So I believe it's till midnight. Yep. It's, it's changes. So what we usually do, because that's also something new in town with a noise ordinance mm -hmm. change, is we ask for a one hour extension to 11 p.m. in case our shows run later. But once we get to September, it gets dark so early that we don't need that extension because we don't want to be in the dark for so long. Gotcha. Yeah, but I, I don't know if the noise ordinance extension is necessary anymore for these outdoor events on a, on a Saturday. Um, the, well, the noise ordinance that, uh, was uh, adopted by the board uh, with a revision to the hours for Fridays and Saturday nights, and I think there's a couple of holiday uh, mm -hmm. mentions in it as well. Uh, Fourth of July and one other, I don't remember, but New Year's Eve perhaps. So yeah, the, the, there's no need for an exception or a, an addition to ours, it's, it's built in. I'm pretty sure I just put it out on the application of, of years of getting used to putting it on the application. Because <laughs> yeah. there's yeah. three different times. Can you speak to the Keep On Growing Festival? Um, absolutely, absolutely. Um, I was hoping to reveal the lineup today, but we're still waiting on one great band. Um, hopefully I'll know by tomorrow, but um, it's another festival with music and food, um, just like the other ones. The growing is just not food, it's not marijuana or anything. Well, there are some Plans. sponsors for the festival that are marijuana companies, yes, okay. there are. So growing is... Hinting at something, so that's what yes. I'm to get at. Yes. 
Any more questions? <coughs> yeah, just to clarify, Eric, our noise ordinance was increased till to midnight, was it? Fridays and Saturday nights, and then uh, again, not the couple yeah. of holidays. Jason, have any concerns? Pardon? Jason, concerns? <coughs> Jason, did you have any concerns? No, Tom and I met on Friday, so we're on the same page. Good. Sorry. Thank you. Um, we need a motion. Do I, I do? Shall I, do you want a separate motion for each one, or? Uh, I think you can approve all three. Models. Okay, great, thanks. I just listed the dates separately. Uh, I'll make a motion that we uh, approve um, the three festivals as listed. Um, for uh, Tom Moog. I'll second that. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion's passed. Thank you. Thank you so. I just have one question. I believe the sure. next select board meeting is when you approve a catering license for these festivals. Um, my restaurant, Moog's Place, would be the caterer, and we do put a bar in a controlled a uh, area in the Oxbow Park. And uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to attend that meeting because uh, Mondays are the night, so I have my son. But if I may just say, um, that's my liquor license, and once I take that liquor license outside my restaurant into that park, I'm completely aware of what can happen and the consequences, and that means everything to me. So what we do is we put in the utmost safety to make sure that we operate that as I operate my restaurant. Are you required to get a, uh, an event permit from the DLC? That is correct. And do they require fencing? They do. Yeah. And that's correct. Our boys. Yeah, yeah. all of that stuff, <laughs> and uh, that'll be on the agenda for the next meeting. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank Thanks. you. <laughs> and on the next is pavement cut application. I'm not as exciting as Tom's. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Jonathan Mogar opening up Soulmate Brewing across the street. Um, we were hoping to be open actually three years ago and then COVID, but uh, we just found that some of the power equipment that we had ordered from an electrical engineer here in Vermont made a miscalculation. So we need to actually bring 50 feet of conduit, which is already in the ground part way to our building. So we just need to cut through there, put it in the ground and we can pull power and then we can start brewing um, and get this place open. So just requesting permission to do that. So there's a power box by the uh, post office on the side, the off street parking area. There is conduit that runs from that box. Tom tells me it runs out across the travel lane, so they won't be cutting into the blacktop in the travel lane area. It's actually, uh, it comes out to the back side of the DeMar building where it ends, and he's going to expose that end. They'll be able to run the three phase power through the conduit that exists in the ground and extend the line out to his property. So that's where he's actually going to be cutting the pavement is from his property to just behind the DeMar building. It's on town, town land. So access to the parking lot can only be from Pleasant Street? No, the, the parking lot won't be, uh, the access won't be um, interrupted at all. Okay. <clears throat> There'll be perhaps some of the parking on the side towards Solnate Brewing just because of the pile of dirt or something like that. But um, not a huge impact from this project. He's going to cut the blacktop, excavate down, expose the conduit, and then recover it. Add new conduit in, run the, the three phase line to it, and uh, then backfill it and compact it. We're going to be paving the parking lot later this spring. So uh, you'll do a good job getting it compacted in layers. Good timing. Yeah. yeah, that's why I'm like, let's get this done before the paving. So it's yes. all, it all yes. looks nice and neat. So it's all done, all your your work's being done behind the building then, behind the, all the buildings, not in the front. Yeah, it's all in the back. It's all correct. Back. All right. And you're doing all this work. The town's not on the hook for any of this. I mean, if you want to. <laughs> <laughs> My wall is pretty thin right now. Uh, yes, we're doing it. It's, it's not on the town. <coughs> Okay, do I hear a motion? Uh, well, um, um, are all of the permits in place? Uh, they've been done, yes. Everything's done. Uh, water, uh, water and Light and DLC and everybody. Yeah, Water and Light's doing part of their stuff. Yeah, liquor's, liquor's been done. Yeah, correct. Yes, absolutely. Everything's done. Do you need to get my sanity checked? But everything else is. <laughs> okay. 
Do I hear a motion? I'll make a motion. We approve the pavement cut request by Soulmate Brewery. Thank you. And a second? I'll second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, motion passed. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you for Good coming night. in. Thank you. you too. Next on the agenda, accept resignation from Scott Lounge. We have a couple of resignations here. Oops, there you go. So I'm gonna to speak to um, items four through 12 um, because they're all HR related. Can I hear you? I'm gonna to speak to items four through 12. Can you hear me? Not very loud. Um, there are five resignations, three new hires, and one addition to our MEMS volunteer roster for you to approve and or accept. Two of the resignation letters that we have received are from part-time paramedics from the MEMS department. We have identified two individuals to backfill the two positions, Kelly Mayo and Hunter Tolman, who are currently volunteers. Um, one, um, once I am done, if you, Bill is here, um, if you wish, he can speak to their experience and, and his, um, and their qualifications. Um, I'm confident after um, completing the interviews that both Kelly and Hunter um, will be great additions to the team. Um, Jarvis Fitz, who is also for you to approve, um, is one of the part-time paramedics who is leaving and he um, has requested that we um, add him to our volunteer roster. So very grateful that he is willing to stay on as a volunteer. Um, we also received um, a resignation from our highway foreman. We've identified our current employee, Derek Small, to backfill that position. Kevin is here and he can speak to his qualifications and experience working with him. Um, so I have, there are nine motions for you to approve or accept this evening. Okay. There's a correction on number 12. It should say A, E, M, T. Don, if you're going to be the one reading them. It says EMT. It should be advanced EMT. Is that for Tallman? Oh, I see what you're saying. Yes, the last one, number 12. So it's AMT? Yes. Okay. All right. I can start out. Yeah, why don't you do that? Um, I move to accept Scott Longy's res resignation as the highway foreman effective March 31st, 31st 2023. I'll second. Can I just... Well, any discussion? Do we have or can we get any more background into the reasons behind the resignation? Yeah, he got a job offer from private sector that was well above what we could even begin to compete with. That's for him. So, it was um, a huge loss for us. So we had a motion and a second, correct? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 I'd say, like to say with regret. Is there a question or not? Do you have a question? Go yeah. ahead. Can I talk? Yeah, come on up. Just tell us who you are. Tony Cody from Cody Hill. So I talked to Scott several times and I got to know him pretty good. And he was very displeased with upper management. And that's why he's gone. Uh, that would be the superintendent. Um, hard hard to work with. Okay. And I and and those are the, that's the main reason right there, is it? and that's why Scott's gone. And Scott was a good man. Paula Beatty, HR director. I would um, request that we not talk about the resignation letters. Um, I don't feel that it is appropriate. The letters are in your packets, and I don't think that um, it's appropriate to talk about why these individuals left. You have their letters. They've explained it in their letters. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, did we have a, we, we accepted that, correct? We, we did, did that, yes. yeah. good. I thought we did. I said I, I don't know if everyone yeah. else did. <laughs> I thought we said I. I, sorry. I, <laughs> I think we did. I, I yeah. got mine out right before. Because <laughs> I said with regrets, so. Yeah. Yeah. All right, accept resignation from P Peter Hughes, part-time police officer. <coughs> I make a motion we accept Peter Hughes' resignation as a part-time police officer, effective March 30th, 2023. A second? I'll second. Motion a second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 You will tag With you. regret Aye. also. Yeah. <laughs> uh, accept resignation from Samuel Johnson, PT paramedic, part-time. 
I move to accept Samuel Johnson's resignation as a PT paramedic, effective <coughs> March 18th, 2023. I will second. We've got a motion and second. Um, and with regrets also, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Accept resignation from Gervais Fitz. I move to accept, I believe it's Jarvis. Jarvis. Fitz, Fitz's resignation as a PT paramedic, effective March 27th. 2023. I'll second. Got a second. A motion and a second. And all those in favor? Aye. 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 Again, with regret. And accept resignation of Patrick Sad. I move to accept Patrick Sad's re resignation as a full time police officer, effective March 31st, for 31st, 2023. Got a motion and a, a second. A second. Accept resignation of Patrick Sad. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And approve hiring Derek Small as a full-time highway foreman, step nine at $27.13 per hour. I make a motion to hire Derek Small as the highway foreman, step nine at $27.13 per hour. I have a second. Uh, I'll second. Did you have uh, any discussion? I guess I, I just want to, can we talk a little bit about Derek's history? Well, I would ask Kevin to speak on behalf of Derek. He's worked with him since uh, Derek came to work. Oh, there he is. Kevin Barrows, Highway Superintendent. Point up a little closer. Kevin Barrows, Highway Superintendent. Derek is a uh, fairly long-term, five, almost five years, employee with the town at this point. Um, he's a tech three. He's got uh, grading experience, excavator experience. He's led teams. Um, he's been Scott's go-to person when Scott's been away. So he's, he's got the knowledge and, and desire and drive to move forward and understanding on how what workflow needs to happen with the, with the crew. And I think with in our interview process, he showed us that he was qualified enough for us to move him in front of the board. And Derek's been there for how many years now? Just over five or right around five. And obviously he's familiar with the crew that he's gonna be working with. Yes, he's been in that same spot for the whole, the whole time, his whole tenure. Was he the only internal applicant? He was. Any other discussion? I'm not quite sure, Tony. Are you say something complimentary or derogatory? If it's derogatory, I don't want no, to hear. Not what I say. I, 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 I gotta... you, you can say, but not. A, I don't want derogatory comments against the people that work at for our town. So, is it derogatory? Never, never derogatory. Well, the last comment was derogatory. I don't believe it, was. it felt derogatory. That's why Paula got up and said something. I want to know if Derek is in the room. Don't know. Is, is Derek here in the room? You would think if he's going to have a job like that, he could come here and, 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 and greet, him, greet himself. Well, That's an sure. important job for the town. Our roads, our roads right now are in disarray. Okay, thank you, Tony. Thank you. Thank you. So you don't want me to talk? Not, not, no, it, just, it just feels very negative right now. No, thank you. Paula? Um, if you approve hiring Derek, I would invite him to the next meeting. I did not want him um, to feel obligated to come here during the discussion. So, um, cause right now it's not a formal offer of employment until you make your motion to accept that. And then if that is the request, I will happily ask him to come. Okay, thank May you. May I ask a question about uh, procedure? Sure. Um, in a position like this uh, with the highway, is it, um, <clears throat> Is it normal to post this as an open position or um, is it normal process to fill it internally? So we have a, we do have a process to our hiring um, for all of our positions. Um, it is a 10 day internal. Um, I'm a huge advocate for internal advancement mm -hmm. um, in allowing our employees to see that that's an opportunity for growth. Mm -hmm. um, so we do the 10 day and I apologize, I have a cough drop. I went to, if I didn't think I was gonna speak, so again. Um, 
so we do have a 10-day internal, and then we go external. Um, there's a hiring committee. Um, there is um, a process of um, going through the applications. The hiring committee determines, working with me, the town administrator, and the department head, um, we identify the strong applicants. Um, if we have multiple, we've had multiple internals before. So everyone is um, provided the same opportunity, same questions. It's a very thorough process. We do that with the police department, the highway, EM, EMS, all of them. Very consistent. And I actually am working on a policy. A so there's a, you know, if for whatever reason I'm not here, there is a consistent and continued policy in place. And where would these positions be posted? Um, I send them to each of the department heads and ask that they post them. And then here, I send out an email to the internal employees here at this building, um, and it is posted in the kitchen. Is that for external also? Just for the first 10 days. External, we've done Burlington Free Press for the police okay. department. Um, we've um, put them on our website okay. um, and we've used the news of citizen we've used the Snow reporter so local newspapers All right. thank you for that welcome will we approve that hiring policy paula when it's ready when the time comes yeah. yes but i think the benefits and the personnel policy will be well before that one okay okay thank you You're welcome. okay judy can you remind me where we are did we do a motion you have mm -hmm. a motion you have a second we're just waiting for a vote okay all those in favor of approving hiring Derek Small, say aye. 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 It's a motion passed. Okay, number nine, approving adding Jervis Fitz as an MES volunteer. I'll make a motion that we um, accept um, Jervis Fitz um, as a uh, MEMS volunteer. I'll second that. Okay. And I'm just impressed that he's he's resigned his position, but he's coming back to, to be a volunteer. I'm that's very awesome. impressed yeah, by that's that. awesome. Yeah, it's really good. Yeah. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, we've approved that motion. Number 10, hiring, approve hiring Kelly Mayo as the part-time paramedic at $20.68 per hour. Do I have a motion? I can make a motion to hire Kelly Mayo as a PT paramedic at $20.68 per hour. I will second it. Do we would like Bill to come up and talk about the um, Hunter and Kelly? Um, would you like to, Bill? Sure, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Come on up, sure. Sure. Tell us a little bit about them. Nice to know how they've been around. Hi, I'm. Uh, Bill Mapes, the EMS chief of the town of Morristown. Uh, we're fortunate that uh, we have an in-house pool of uh, staff members on the volunteer paid on call side uh, who we can internally post these positions and uh, show them that there is advancement within EMS. Um, Kelly Mayo joined us uh, late last year as a volunteer paramedic. Uh, she has completed her orientation with our organization uh, she comes to us with uh, about a year's worth of experience with uh, Falmouth Fire in Maine, uh, where she was a, a lead paramedic with their agency. Uh, so uh, Kelly can step right in uh, to uh, the position uh, and cover the hours that are open. Uh, Hunter Talman is a longtime volunteer with our agency. Uh, having started uh, as uh, an EMT, uh, he has completed education, has an associate's degree in fire science. Uh, and he's also an advanced EMT. Uh, Hunter, being on our volunteer side, is another member who can step right in and begin covering hours for us. Uh, both of them already have uh, medical direction through Copley Hospital uh, as advanced providers and are good to go. Oh, excellent. Okay. Thank you, Bill. Sure. So we have a motion on the, on the floor. We have a second. All those in favor to hire uh, Kelly Mayo? Aye. 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 It's approved. And next, number 11, approve hiring Hunter Tallman as a part-time EMT at $17.87 per hour. We'll make a motion to hire Hunter Tallman as a part-time AMT at $17.87 per hour. I'll second. Okay, wait, any discussion? No. Okay, all, uh, all those in favor of approving hiring Hunter Tallman? Aye. 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 Pass. So appoint a pound keeper. 
Is that Jason? So we've been looking for a pound keeper, as you all know, and that's one of our annual appointments. And Jason has uh, made some phone calls, and I'll let him explain the background as to why we're changing. Jason, even though you're in uniform, can you still introduce yourself, sure. please? Jason Thank Luno, you. police chief. Um, so Jason, I forget his last name. MacArthur. 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 So Jason MacArthur's uncle owns Lamoille County Kennels up in Garfield, which is where we've been bringing our dogs, and where Brian has been bringing our dogs for the last, I don't know how many years, for a long time. Jason is going to be taking over that business uh, officially July 1st, but he's already got his hands in the pot right now. Uh, I spoke to him. He's willing to be our pound keeper. Uh, he's not willing to come out and catch dogs or anything like that. That'll be up to the police department, but he's willing to maintain the pound, uh, which has been the process for several years now. And that'll be very helpful to, to the police department. I think I saw on the police blotter that they didn't have any place to take the dogs. Right. It's going to be very helpful. And he's willing to, we're still going to work out some things, but right now if we need something in the middle of the night. We're going to bring a dog up there. He's going to meet us up there. I'll let us in. It's a lot of paperwork. <coughs> Good. He seems to be pretty accommodating. And Jason, that'll, that'll begin when? Jason's going to be official as soon as you approve him tonight. Okay. Okay, so great. We're gonna, there's a little bit of a transition going on with the business, but so we may deal with his uncle a little bit, but it'll be one or the other. Excellent. So, do I hear a motion? So, just for clarification, we're appointing Pound the, keeper. The, um, the, our, so, are we? doing the business or the person the person okay so he just owns the business okay the i just that's for my clarification thank you you're welcome i'll make a motion to appoint jason MacArthur as the pound keeper a second good and a motion and a second so uh approval to appoint jason MacArthur as pound keeper say aye aye aye, aye. and it's motion passed all right into the fun part of the meeting budget revisions old business <coughs> so our, our last meeting as you're all aware we uh, outlined uh, a few revisions to the operation side of the budget and uh, attempted a process of a line-by-line -line review of the budget itself it didn't go well so uh, we've changed directions here uh, Tina and the department heads have been working very, very diligently in my absence for the last couple of weeks to uh, continue to identify areas in the budget that, I won't say creative accounting, but it's uh, understanding how the accounting structure works, that we're able to make some reductions uh, and other areas for the board to make um, considerations for as far as cuts go. And I'm going to have Tina speak to that and outline those, <clears throat> those areas in which uh, you'll be able to see uh, reductions that she and the department heads have made and uh, and then have you discuss possible cuts. Um, you'll notice on the um, list of suggested cuts as of 4, 3 of 23, you'll see in underneath uh, the different departments, it'll say additional police cuts. Um, Jason and I discussed cutting the overtime of his personnel, and he felt that he could probably do that given the fact that he is asking for another officer. So that reduced the budget by $10,000 plus the benefits for FICA and retirement. So that reduced the budget some. Excuse me, Tina. Are, are you looking, are we at the. Wait, this. Okay, I'm just trying to get on the stage. Okay. No, sorry. Right? Got a lot of papers. I know. 16 and 17. Um, Another thing that we did is uh, Travis mentioned that the uh, federal uh, projection for gas and diesel had gone down. So I went and took another look at that and was able to adjust the budget for all of our departments that use gas or diesel. And they were able to be adjusted down a little bit. So that's one of the things that we did. You'll see that in underneath um, additional fire cuts, additional EMS cuts. Um, you'll see those dollar figures there. And it, this on page 16 that we're looking at. Oh, I, no, nope. The next I was gonna say that's okay, we're looking at 17. You're looking at this, right? Okay, thank you. Yeah. It's 17 in the you packet. Over, right? Yeah, the overview I'll, I'll talk about after. This is just okay. showing you how we got there. Great, thank okay. you. Yep. So, um, 
if you turn to page two of the suggested cuts you'll notice that highway has some cuts and changes on there the fuel being one that we spoke of the next two are the two big trucks that we had intended to buy this coming year the tandem and the single axle when we budgeted originally we budgeted as if we would make two payments on them next year but due to the lateness of the budget and not passing when it would have this delays the ordering of the trucks which will delay the order the uh, borrowing of the money so we'll only need to make one payment on each one of those trucks so that reduced it by twenty five thousand for each truck um kevin got uh an updated quote for the sidewalk holder machine and the quote he had gotten originally was a 21 holdover so it was considerably less and that one's gone now so the price of the sidewalk machine went up eighty two hundred dollars so he decided the best thing to do would be to try to put off the ford f-250 truck one more year and that will reduce it by ninety nine hundred so that was a savings in the budget So if you turn to the next page, <clears throat> um, you'll see additional revenue. Anna worked very hard to try to figure out what she thought would be the best amount to charge for next year's summer rec camp. And she increased the fees, not a lot, but increased them proportionately to what they were increased this year, giving a $5,100 revenue increase. And she also is planning some events that will generate registration fees and whatnot, and that is an additional $5,000 of revenue. Um, the other areas of consideration that you asked Eric and I to, uh, to look at, one of them was the library. Um, they had originally asked for a 61% increase. I went back to see what our operating increase was going to be for the town and it was 20.1%. So I thought giving them a 20% increase from last year was the fair thing to do, um, given the fact that that's what everybody else has to have or live with. Um, so that reduced that. The paving for 190,000, I cut this coming year so that we won't do any more additional paving. We'll just finish up the paving that there is to do from this year. And the sidewalk construction, this is the $100,000 that was in the operations, not, not the Jersey Heights sidewalk. This is aside from that. It was $100,000 and I reduced it to $50,000. In doing all of that, I was able to make the operating um, the operating total base operating budget 20 percent um then if you look on the uh, overview now's the time to look on the overview you will see the operating base budget at 20.1 percent if you look down the special warning items i took out the sidewalk article it was originally forty four thousand two hundred dollars which is one payment on jersey heights sidewalk i took that out uh, not knowing if it would pass or not, but I, I just took it out of there for this purpose. So if it passes, we'll have to add it back in. Um, so, and the appropriations, the service agencies got reduced by whatever people voted for. So in the end, the bottom line is 16.4%. So we've gone from a 28.2% budget to a 16.4% budget. And you're... How much money total was removed from the budget? $708,000. That's the total decrease. Since the budget that failed on town meeting day. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. No, that's in all. So it went from, let's see, that's original. It went from the original one that was uh, given to the town's folks. 
It was a total operating base budget of $8.656 million. That includes the revenue being taken into consideration, and it reduced it to $7.947 million. So it's the figure that's in the, the bottom line, the, the 16.4. Keep going down. Yeah, the 16.4 16. would be the, uh, the taxpayers. Yeah. Right. But I'm looking at the operating base budget, mm -hmm. 7947000 7, Right. Okay. Do we know what the grand list for Roughly, what the tax rate increase would be at a point four percent. I have Sarah and Tina work on um, the formula for that. Uh, we did not run those numbers because some of these cuts that were given to you tonight are subject to your yeah. amendment. So uh, we haven't run those numbers, but our grand list growth is looking at two point one one percent. Last year was one point six, which dropped the tax rate what four percent. Uh, last year, when we came in with a 12.7% increase on our budget, and uh, <coughs> the impact of the 1.6% growth on the grant list took it down to an actual 9.9% increase. So, I don't draw conclusions on that conservative side of things. That was about a 3% drop this year. It's 2.11%, which is a significant increase from last year. Um, so, it's it, it will have I would say minimally a four percent uh, drop to the sixteen point four percent, which would put it in line with last year's increase. It would. <clears throat> so, what's the pleasure of the board? Um, I think we need some more details. Um, we're with the police officer, mm -hmm. so we're we're now that we have two positions. Is that correct? One. Two if the budget passes. Two if the budget passes. Correct. As what, what do you mean two if the budget? We're asking for one additional police officer well, this we month. Just had a Plus oh, resignation. Well, yeah, resignation. But that's already budgeted in yeah. here anyway. Yeah. yeah. Right. So that's what. So we still are. are so that that is in place. The. Um, we're. I'm just trying to get our staffing. Um, the. There was a uh, an additional supervisor being hired for the highway department, correct? That's still in place. Yeah, the budget that you see here mm -hmm. is a budget that reflects having all positions filled. Yeah. So, you know, even the even the vacancies that we have, this budget reflects them having somebody in them. Do we anticipate any surplus funds from the highway vacancy we've had for a while? We're going to now have another highway vacancy, another police vacancy. Can any of that be rolled in to offset? Well, the what, what you're talking about there is, yeah, yes, that does lower our expenses. And in the end, at the end of the year, yeah. that gives us more of a fund balance. Yeah. And our fund balance is, is fairly healthy. It's um, almost $900,000, yeah. according to our last year's Budget. And so if we don't use the funds, it just stays there, but it increases the fund balance. Could we use any of that fund balance as a budget officer? You actually could. Um, I talked to our, um, our auditor today, and she said that, you know, she confirmed the fact that we have, well, $896,961 in our fund balance that we could utilize it call it anticipated use of fund balance which other towns have done to lower their tax rates stowe did it mm -hmm. st albans town did it um and in all honesty both of those towns had increases well above 16.4 percent but were able to lower that 
by using their fund balance. So you can do that. It takes roughly $80,000 to reduce this, uh, the percentage 1%. So if you put in $160,000 of your reserve, of your fund balance, this would be 14.4% instead of 16.4. I'm sorry, I missed that. What's in our fund balance right now? 800, this was as of June 30, 22, $896,961. And we are likely to, I know I'm not gonna hold anyone to this, but I know we're concerned we're likely to have a budget um, surplus for FY23 as well, given the vacancies. And yes, this is a growing figure and it's been a long time since it actually went into the negative, you know, to reduce it from the year before. So this is, is fairly healthy, um, you know, and she, our auditor said that, that she thought that using the fund balance would make sense and would be appropriate if, if that's what you wanna do for a one-time thing to help reduce the impact on the taxpayers. It's a concept I would support. And right now, I know you probably said that, you've, you've said a lot, um, I appreciate everything you've said. Is any of that fund balance being used to reduce this budget at this point? No, okay. nothing is being used. And so there's 896 in there right now, mm -hmm. and 80,000 would drop at 1%, you said. Right. So if we did, What's the what's the negative if we do let's say we did 160 out of the fund balance? What is the negative? What do you mean the downside of that? Right. Yes. The only downside of it is that your fund balance would go down 160 thousand, which you may or may not make up in the year we're in. You never know till the end of the year. Um, fund balance would be used for uh, right now any tragedies that would happen or something that was unforeseen and not budgeted for that's when you would use your fund balance we we're <coughs> hoping not to have any of that if we had another uh, Halloween storm for example. right that's that's where that comes in and I take it at this point we have nothing on the radar for that fund balance <laughs> for those funds I mean, no, obviously, disasters we don't know about, the, but there's no, nothing yeah. else out there that we're. Those funds are never, never targeted for expenditure. Never. They are undesignated funds purposely because of the need for a response during the time of an environmental emergency, such that we can afford to make the repairs in advance of a FEMA declaration, the FEMA reimbursement process. So we have the money up front to do it without impacting the current year's budget. So this is a reserve money. Is there in the event to cover those costs without impacting that year's annual budget? I can tell you that this last round from the FY19 storm, we just received our, la our final payment from it takes payment years, state. so it, it makes a sense to ago. have a fairly healthy fund balance. But I mean, I I don't I don't anticipate a problem using some of it to help defray the costs for taxpayers this year because it's a tough budget. Okay. Would um, the board be interested in waiting to make a final decision until we have the f a new, the fifth member coming on board? Uh, yes. Yes, yes, I would be very supportive of that. Uh, absolutely, I, I, yeah, more the merrier. Okay. Um, yeah. And I, I just, I do have concerns about um, <coughs> the rec position going from a part-time to full-time. It's the total uh, cost to the town is fairly significant. Um, and I have I mean, talked with lots of folks. Um, I just feel that this is not the year to um, bring on another full-time non-essential uh, position. Um, again, with the businesses out there, um, inflation, um, I, there's a lot of businesses and, uh, you know, what we're finding in businesses is that coming out of the pandemic, there was a lot of money in the pandemic. There were a lot of hires hired. Um, and now that businesses are up and running, the revenue is not coming in and there are significant layoffs happening everywhere. Um, and I think we're just now, and we're gonna see a lot of businesses closing. Um, and so when I see this anticipated increase in fees, having spoken with people um, that were already um, 
questioning the recreation program as is. I just don't, I feel like we should not, because it's a non-essential, uh, I just feel that it should wait until we get through some of this inf inflation and crazy times. Uh, and um, I just want to point out too that the fees that we charge for our rec department are well below what anybody charges for daycare. So it does help our town. It's not, I mean, granted it does cost money, but it does help our residents and it helps them with, with affordable daycare during the summer months. Um, I mean, I'm not arguing with you. I'm, again, I have lots of people talking to me. I'm uh, a messenger. I don't have children. So I've talked with lots of people. That was the feedback that I have gotten. I'm not saying that it's wrong or right, but um, overall, because we talk about salaries, but we need to talk about essential versus non-essential, um, the, these positions and the cost to the town because the minute you bump someone up to full time, we're now adding pensions and steps and um, there's a lot of other things that the salary is not just the cost, it's a significant cost to the town. And I just feel like um, it was talked about it before. And I feel um, that a lot of what has been cut are services that are essential to the taxpayers. Uh, and I'm very, very concerned about that. And, you know, one uh, to throw it out there is I would like to see the $5,000 put back in for the Zoom meetings because that is the one thing for two solid years I have heard people asking. There is so much talk on all the social medias right now, misinformation out there, and the best way to stop that is to make sure that people understand how the DRB and the planning work and give them access to those meetings so they can have um, a voice in uh, building these. And I think that is our priority. And I, I see that as those are essential services that the, um, that the town is paying for. Um, and I think the, the one thing that I think can hold is rec. And that's my opinion. I <laughs> sat on the Recreation Council for, yeah. I'm going to guess, eight years. It was two different committees I sat on. And the one thing we wanted was a recreation director. Uh, the town is in need of one. Waterbury has one. Stowe has one. Johnson has part-time, and they're a smaller community than we are. And uh, we didn't have a town administrator who supported it at the time. So it didn't go any further. We didn't have really a select board at that time who supported it. We now have, we did have a select board that did support a full-time rec, and we have a town administrator. So I, I disagree. I think it's just about as essential as some of our other services we have in town. Um, when I served on the rec council, we did a rec committee, whatever it's called. We did some really fun, interesting things and provided some activities for parents and kids. Um, and the volunteer committee just couldn't keep up with the demands and um, the work that had to be done. And I think um, once Anne is in that position full time or anybody else in that position full time, they can also bring in grants and other things that are out there that are available that a part time person doesn't have the time to do. So I think she'll be able to supply or offset her uh, um, salary. Could we make that a condition of employment? Could we increase the proposed revenue for that position and make it an expectation of that role that it's partially grant funded? I, I, I don't, I wouldn't go there. I, Judy? Yes. <clears throat> Paula Beatty, HR Director. I almost forgot to introduce myself. I've had the honor of working um, with our uh, rec coordinator and I have watched her performance and bring our <clears throat> summer program to a level that um, would not have been done without her. Um, she has created um, a rec uh, manual. She is, we are working together to do job descriptions. There's a hiring process. The program that she has provided in just her part-time, she's part-time for part of the year and full-time for the other part of the year. And the program that she has been able to create um, really under the part-time status has been incredible. I think that, um, I'm going to jump onto what you're saying, Judy. I think that 
with that full-time position, she will be able to do the grant writing that she needs to to cover some of the expenses of that program. Um, I think the revenue that she gets from the program covers all the um, counselors. I also want to speak to that as well because we are employing the youth of our community um, through that summer program. And I have had the honor of interviewing with Anna, the returning counselors, and we have a great group of youth that we are bringing on board. So I just, I, I appreciate your feedback and, and what you're hearing from um, our community, but I would really, um, I'd really like you to um, reconsider not giving up that um, position as a full-time position. Um, I can't speak to enough of the integrity and the professionalism and etiquette and everything that Anna brings to this position. She is an absolute um, incredible hire. I would not recommend passing her up. And again, I'm not, I'm just saying delay it. And I would love to have a total cost of the position so that people are clear that what with all with all the insurance and everything, what mm -hmm. it's costing the taxpayers. And again, I'm I'm well, looking at EMS volunteers who make three dollars an hour. Well, you know. the difference between um, the budget for her salary last year and full time is twenty thousand dollars. But that's not in. She's now getting. You're right. She, she's getting. She would be insurance, getting. So there's that's another right. So thousand dollars. So I, again, I when I talk salaries, I really appreciate if we can talk total compensation. Well, I have to add this up. I don't have it all. I have it broken down so people can understand. Um, the <clears throat> retirement on her position went from $2,274 to $3,625. That's the increase there. The health insurance was $7,045. The uh, health reimbursement account is $2,275. And that's the only increase that you have on the uh, recreation side for bringing Anna from a part-time position to a full-time position. So you're talking $40,000. It's not, you know, it's not as much as you would think, I guess. And she's increased the, inc the revenue by $80,000. I mean, it, Let's see here. Yeah, we didn't used to have recreation revenue, and now we do. Um, well, and there's other costs. So the minute she comes on full time, there's other costs, though. The cost. What know, other costs? Of all the expenses of her office and everything. So there's other expenses tied into. Well, a we're already position. paying for her her office. <laughs> I mean, it's part of this building. But equipment and initiating, I mean, there's, you know. We already have that because she was part-time and we had to get it to, from her. We had to get it for her when she was part-time. She will continue to use the same equipment when she's full-time. She's also having to cover the cost of the shirts for the counselors through sponsorship from the local businesses. We've had great success in the past with local businesses doing so. I mean, she uh, has the time on a full-time basis to expand that uh, search and request of more businesses to see if we can get more participation in that. Uh, I, and, and again, that's where I'm concerned is I'm talking to the businesses. We're about to lose a lot of businesses. And, and I know for a fact, talking to the owners, I don't think people realize how borderline a lot of our businesses are. And that's my concern is that in the perfect world, yes, but if businesses start going under, um, which they're going to go, yeah, is happening, um, and people are losing their jobs, then it's a domino effect. And th that's my fear, is over committing at a very, very um, kind of <coughs> un unpredictable time. Yeah, I don't know. And I just, I would like to do that. <coughs> I don't all. know the flavor of that. Trisha would know better than I would about businesses in town. I don't know. Yeah. Trisha's, on, Trisha's on Zoom. Yeah. Well, and I mean, I'm talking, they're all, fr a lot of them are my friends. So I'm talking with them very closely. And, you know, this is, um, again, uh, that, the, you know, there are, they are struggling. And you look at, most of the businesses are not open and up running full time yet. A lot of them are not. So that that's only that's my concern is over committing the town taxpayers 
in a perfect case scenario is what I'm, I'm concerned about. And we, you know, again, I mentioned I'm very concerned about cutting services. And again, when we have EMT volunteers working for $3 an hour, um, they'll be working for $15 an hour in this budget. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, there's just, that's, again, it gets to essential over non-essential. And this is very, you know, iffy times. And I, there, there are so many other positions that cannot be. So I'm just afraid of overcommitting and then, oops, down the line. And, and when, again, with the $5,000, you know, that was one of the cuts. And that's, the, again, the one thing for two solid years I've heard everyone asking for. And, the, yeah, the you know, reason, that serves the entire population as opposed to just people with children. True. No, recreation program doesn't do people, just people with children. It's for everybody. Well, I, 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 I get the visionary, yeah. but... No, I mean, that's, a, that's the purpose of hiring someone. So yeah. we ha I was talking to her about doing more activities for adults. And, and we bought equipment for adult, adults to be using. So it's not just children. That was going to um, be one of my questions, Judy, is what other programs <coughs> could we potentially be seeing? I'm sorry? That was going to be one of my questions, is what other programs beyond the summer child care program could we see from this position? I don't know about child care necessarily, but no, beyond, beyond the sorry, no, beyond the summer yeah. program. No, I think other, I, what other programs I'm going to let Trisha because she's been working closely with Anna. Do you want to okay. speak, Trish? Yeah, I would like to speak a little bit about this. So, I've done community development for the town for 12 years. At about year two, we started pushing for a recreation position in our town. Laura, I hear what you're talking about businesses. I don't know that I agree with you. I go out and I talk to a lot of our local businesses. I don't know if you're talking about home businesses or businesses, but some of many of the businesses I have talked to lately are thriving in town. And I, I and I'm not here to dispute what you just said, but I'm just saying uh, this is my job is to go out and talk to businesses and hear where their feedback is, how they're doing in our community where where they're at uh can we help you you know can we as a town help you in any way can mac help you that is my job and so i i hear you saying this and i'd be curious to have maybe an off conversation not here at the select board level because i would like to know if we have businesses out there that are struggling because i do not know of any businesses in town that are really struggling as you speak of like at the brink of closing well and that's that's neither here nor there the um the recreation travis you just asked about it um we had a uh recreation committee for a while um yes anna is very very enthusiastic about this we talked about having uh snowshoe races and about uh, snow volleyball and about elderly programs she is definitely right on board about this so every single month there's item after item of different recreation based programs that she will be running after getting through this summer you have to understand last year she came on in what march april like in the summer program was like almost in full swing already um i would tell you if you were cutting anything in this town you'd be foolish to cut the recreation position this is something we need recreation and the health of our community is more important than a lot of other things in our community and this would be one position that i would say i will stand up and say you need to keep that position this is not a year to cut rec we all need to be outside we all saw what COVID did to everyone everyone right. looked to buy bikes they looked to do outdoor events <clears throat> keep that ball rolling to keep the health of our community well thanks Judy. trish martin Judy. Let's just say a couple oh, of Don wanted to say something. Sorry, Martin. Um, so yeah, I just want to weigh in a little bit on some of these comments. So first, this is the first year that I've been on the board and we've had a chance to talk about funding Zoom for DRB and Planning Commission. So I just want to say that it's been, been a year um, and I fully agree, Laura. Yeah, let's put the 5,000 in there and let's, uh, let's take it out of the fund balance. There's lots of money there. Let's just get, you know, in my mind, let's just put that one to rest. Um, thank you, Tina, for all the work that you've put into this. And, um, you know, I, I, know it's a, I know it's a struggle to find all the, all the decreases. I, for one, I'll talk about the rec program in a second, but I, I for one, would still like to see this at 14%. And if it takes 
If it takes using this fund balance, using 160,000, go for it. Let's let's do it. That's that's Don talking. In terms of the rec program, boy, I <laughs> I'm going to start off this way. I, I went to I went to the breakfast with the legislators over in Cambridge this morning, and I listened to our legislators talk, and a bunch of other people were there. And the thing that came up over and over and over again was workforce development. Everyone's struggling with this. Everyone's struggling with find, trying to find workers to, to do the jobs that, um, that need to be done. And there's a couple of things that kept coming up there. And, you know, broadband, we've had multiple meetings where we've had people coming in here and talking about increasing broadband here in, in uh, Morrisville. Housing. Housing has been an ongoing debate for a long time. We don't have the housing. We don't have the housing for the workers that we want. We don't have the childcare either. And we all, we've all listened to what's coming out of Mount Pelier in terms of childcare. And so what am I trying to say? I'm trying to say we, we're, talking, we're talking about a, a rec program now for 100 plus kids, Eric? Just all around our kids service last year, yes. That's 100 kids. Um, that's a substantial number of kids in this town. That's a substantial resource. And um, I hate to see it go. And, and I'm not predicting it's going to go, but this individual who's in this job now, she's been there part-time with no benefits at all, hanging on and waiting until she can go full-time. And I'll tell you, with the workforce the way it is, I bet she could find a full-time job pretty quickly. My guess is she probably really likes what she's doing and really does want to work for the town of Morrisville. So I just want to say, we need to be pretty careful about this because we might just, uh, might just lose her. And then who are we going to hire? And so it's, that's, that's part of the conversation, certainly. I appreciate what you're saying, but I do worry about this. As you know, <laughs> I spent too much of my life working with kids to pass over this too lightly. And my kids went through the rec program in, in Morrisville, and it wasn't, it wasn't then what it is today. It's much more substantial. But I do want to go back and say, there's a bunch of families in this town where having somewhere to send their kids for six weeks, eight weeks, however long the rec program is in the summer, is really important. Um, it was really important for my wife and I, and it's probably much more important for many of those families today. I guess before it goes too much further, I'd really like to see a breakdown of exactly how much this program brings in versus how much goes out. And uh, it sounds to me like, well, I did some quick numbers here. I'm not gonna, not gonna say it's even Steven, but it's, it's close. And uh, I think that's, those are my thoughts on, on all of that. And Martin? Martin Green, Best Street. Appreciate your concerns about the budget, but our children are our future. And I don't think we can ever consider them and the program and what the program will do for them is non-essential. Um, and, and I don't think we can reduce the director or the children or the program to a commodity. They are our future and uh, we need to seriously consider um, the effect and the impact that this program will have, not just on the children, but the entire town. And I don't think we can compare the program to what you were mentioning about the businesses. To me, it's like comparing apples and oranges. Um, so I just would like you to consider that, uh, the importance of this program and of having the director as full time and to be able to take that money from the, uh, the surplus to be able to use it to offset the budget. But I just want to... Um, reiterate that I think this is important in so many ways for for our town and for the future of our town that we can't even put a, a price tag on that. Thank you. Um, I'm going to get Kathy. She's been had her hand up for a while. Um, hold on just a second. Okay. Um, I just want to say that I really would not approve of using our reserve fund um i want to uh, thank laura for bringing up pay scale but in this cut that 
I just heard the finance director go through. There's nothing, there's nothing stated about the increase of the pay scale. And until um, that's acknowledged, I don't think that this budget will pass. Thank you. Thank you. Go ahead, oh, Tom. Then you can, I'm gonna go to the um, Zoom and then I'll have you next. Okay, I have a, a couple of things. My name is Tom Pulia, Morrisville. Uh, one, I'd like to get an explanation of what the uncompensated taxes is, what that money is. That's quite a, quite a lot of money. Uncompensated absences is a pool of money that we try to save to pay for people's retirement. <coughs> they've, you know, they've accumulated vacation time, sick time, that type of thing. And some people, you know, leave with $20,000. I mean, it's quite substantial because they've been here a long time. We don't budget that in our regular operations budget. We put away a little bit of money into this uncompensated absences fund to help defray that cost. Anybody going to be retiring soon? I mean, yes. that's, that's $75,000. That's quite a bit. In but two years' time, we have four people that are okay. slated that could retire. Mm -hmm. Two of them have been here for over 20 years. Okay, good. Uh, one thing I noticed here in all the cuts that the uh, general fund uh, is a 2% drop. You, you, you have a, I think you have a $2 million budget and you, dis you decreased it by $55,000. Everybody else has, has had major decreases. Actually, that, that's not true. Um, under other areas of consideration, yeah. the library, we pulled that out because that's not something that Eric and I feel we have control over. We don't operate that. However, it is reflected in the general fund portion of your budget. So that is general fund uh so just so that you know that there was cuts made there so so you, you use the, how much cut was the library around seventy five thousand. so you you add that to the fifty five thousand. Is that is that how you would do that if, what what fifty five thousand? that you have <laughs> here that you just cut from your budget on the uh as suggested cuts of I think you're talking page 17, the, the top part of page yes. 17. Yes, yes. My question, again, I never get, where are the salaries, the wages of the town on this general budget? Where are they? There, and why aren't there any cuts on that? They're in, included in the, in the budget. They've I don't got see line. It. But you have to look at the whole budget. They've got line items in the entire budget stating what every salary and benefit is. There is a place there that tells the salaries of all the workers there? Yes. Yeah, it's in the town. It's in the town. We don't have that, of course. Well, it's the, it's the detailed budget part. Right. You can see what okay. each individual And how much, how, much, how much was cut of the salaries and budgets uh, for, this, for this budget here? None. And tip none. None. So if you go to your town report, you'll have all the, the salaries are listed in there. I, I couldn't find them in there, but that's okay. There is no cuts in the bet of the wages or the salaries, even though we got this 14.9% increase. That's my understanding. I have talked to a lot of people out there, and I'm gonna put this out again. You talk, I talk to the people out there. They don't care whether this budget is 9, 10%, 12%, or 28%. If they don't see cuts in the salary and wages, they're not going to vote for it. I just want you to be aware of that. You may get it, you may get 10, and you may get it out there. What they're saying, what they're telling me, is they're not going to vote for it unless there's cut in the wages and the salary. I've been wrong before. You may hope I'm wrong this time. Okay, thanks, Tom. Mary Lou on the uh, on Zoom. <coughs> Mary, Can you hear me? yes. Okay, Mary Lou Nichols, um, Morrisville. Uh, I just want to say about the children and recreation. Uh, 
I know that Miss Street said she's talked to business owners and that's a tough situation. I've, I've talked to, I'm a nurse practitioner, family nurse practitioner. I've talked to a lot of parents and kids have really suffered. There are kids out there who've really suffered during COVID. They didn't do well on Zoom. They were isolated. Some of them have more tension and anxiety now. So I'm all for getting the kids back in the kid environment where they have a, a mentor, where they can go home from the camp and uh, the camp and say, oh, Miss Anna told us this today and Miss Anna told us that today, or their counselor, where kids are back in the groove where they're, they're mixed with other kids, not just the kids that are in their classrooms, but you know, in the fifth and sixth grade, there's a lot of kids that are struggling because they know they're going to go to middle school and it's going to be a new stage in their life so uh i i'm with a man that said there are come there are they're not a commodity they're our future and i'm just all for anything to keep these kids back in a in a normalcy where they're racing around and laughing and accomplishing something but they're with other kids and they're learning to socialize not to be isolated that's all i have to say i'm just really for it and Thank you very much. Can Thank I you, Mary. Um, just, I, I'm all for the rec program, but the feedback I have gotten is that so many of the kids that need it cannot are stating that they can't afford this program. So that's part of my concern. Was uh, you know I'm all for it, but if the families and kids that need it can't afford it, then what's the point? And that's that's. Part of what part of what I'm again hearing back is that it's not affordable for a lot of folks out there. I think if those folks would call Anna and talk to her directly, if she has resources available for families that financially struggle, um, we don't advertise those because the folks that provide that funding ask us not to. And I think if those folks are struggling with uh, the program, our fees are in line with the programs in our area and they are on a weekly basis far less than the cost of daycare and any one of the daycare providers has many of these kids don't go to daycare during the school year they're in school so for them to find a daycare provider for just the summer months is next to impossible so i, I would encourage those folks that are telling you that to please call and talk to her and uh, see if she can provide some assistance sir do you want to step up Hi, I'm Jamie Jarrett. I think we have a bigger issue than a director of recreation here, okay? Mm -hmm. If I look at the general budget and I see an increase from last year's voted budget of $600,000, from 21-22 budget, it was $200,000. Now we're up to $600,000. Police department, we're up $300,000. Highway department, we're up $600,000. That's a chunk of money between three departments. And how do you justify going up $600,000 just on a general, general government budget? Where does the 600000 come from? <laughs> Same with the highway. Where does the $600,000 come from? And I can appreciate what Don said regarding <coughs> he would like to see the drop down down to 14 i think it should be dropped down even further than that you're not going to get it passed and i'm telling you right now you're going through all this work and i can appreciate the hard work that you put into it but the bottom line is it's not going to pass because people are extremely up in arms about a the original budget that you presented b you came back last meeting with a revised budget which was a laughable budget you worked hard to get it down to this point you still got to go and i don't know how you're going to do it but it's got to be done and you can't take it out of the reserve you can take x amount of dollars out of a reserve but that's still not going to account for why we're up this high 600 600 and 300 that's a lot of money. That's over a million dollars, a million five, right? <coughs> it's big. 
it's a big number. So, thank, thank you. you. Well, I, I think it's, is it Julia? Julia. Julia. Yeah, <coughs> hand in the back too. Yeah. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. yes. Thank you. Thank you for taking my question. So I just wanted to clarify um, something. The recreation summer school, summer children's recreation program, to my knowledge, has been run for about 30 years, either as by volunteer or by part-time coordinator. So I don't think my understanding wasn't that anybody's proposing to eliminate that. It's just jumping from a part-time position to a full-time position at a time when the budget is stretched thin. So I know there's hard decisions to make and I'm not signaling out this one area per se. There's gonna be hard decisions to make but if it comes down to folks who have lived here for 30 years, they've raised their children here in the same home, they're on fixed income, retirement income now, and it means that it's gonna, our budget's gonna force those folks out of their home versus expanding a position to full time and being able to offer volleyball. I'm sorry, it's a no brainer. There's tough cuts that need to be made, but we should not be forcing people out of their homes and the properties they've been on for the majority of their lives and their children's lives because we have a budget that's unconscionably unfair to the salaries and the living standards of the people who make up our community. The elephant in the room is that the wages are way out of line with what the people in the community can afford. And I don't know how anyone in good conscience can accept being paid two and three times more than the livable wage of the people who are paying their salaries. It's not the base that we have to draw on for our community. We're not a wealthy Stowe or Woodstock. So let's not pretend we are. Thank you. Thanks, Julia. Tony? Then I'll, if there's nobody on Zoom, I'll. Chris is over there. He's been raising his hand. <laughs> no, you go, Chris, first. I'm afraid I might not be very popular in this room right now. <laughs> Just well, tell, us, you tell us your name. My name is Chris Palermo. Um, I've sat where these folks have sat for 16 years in one I was a select board member there. We've had a lot of tough decisions to make about budgets. I, for one, um, think that you've done an admirable job to get to where you are right now. Um, you got to 16.4% with a growth in the grant list. You've, you're, I think, if I heard correctly, you're projecting that to drop that percentage down another 4%, so that gets you to 12. If you take 160 out of your reserve fund, which is really partly money that's already been raised by taxes that really could go back to help the taxpayer in the long in the short run and the long run and still leave a reserve, that gets you down pretty close to 10%. Now we've lived in unprecedented times here in the last two years in terms of inflation. You go to the grocery store, you get your car fixed, you go anywhere, you pay the market rate. And as I looked at the uh, highway foreman getting paid $27 excuse me, an hour, when you can work, go to work for a land, local landscape company and make 25 million lawns, I mean, you've got to take a good hard look at what your money is buying. And if you've got longevity, you've got employees that are willing to come here and work hard every day and provide services to this community, I think it's a, a really poor decision to take a take focus and aim at those employees and paying them market rate. Probably even at 8.7 percent, you're still paying them below market rate for the job that they're doing, and you're going to get a mass exodus. And they are the lifeblood of this community. It what makes everything work, and I think that that's the wrong decision. I think if you can get the budget down to 10% with your growth in your in your grand list and using money from the fund balance, 
and you present the community with a 10% growth, and you tell them what it looks like in real dollars, because honestly, what is 10%? It's just a number that you can't relate to. If you take a look at last year's tax, um, tax rate, and you apply these new numbers to what it's going to look like at a new tax rate, on an average home in Morrisville, is it a $100 increase? Is it a $200 increase? Because that's what matters to me. That's what I can relate to. 10%, 20%, I can't relate to that. So I think at your next meeting, if you can talk to the community what that's really going to look like in dollars and cents, and make it their tax bill, then, then we can have an honest discussion. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I just want to know whatever happened to mom and dad when it comes to daycare. Why can't mom and dad wash their kids and the taxpayers? No, it's not. Come on. Uh, tell, uh, what, okay. Taxpayers should not have to pay for a daycare. Period. Thank you. Yeah. So, is there anybody else who wants to speak who hasn't spoken? Okay, go ahead, Tom. Just say your name again. Tom. 20% of the residents in Morrisville are over the age of 65. 20%. Most of them would can agree are on. You know, they're not going to get an increase. Here. They're, they're on, uh, on the stock budget. And what you're asking them to pay is. <laughs> and again, I'm going to say, I, you want to drop this down to 10%, you're going to have to cut the taxes. I mean, the wages. Thank you for um, getting on there. Um, Wait, hold on, please. And if you don't cut the salaries down, there's nothing that the people, the residents can, can relate to, you're not going to get a budget. And I hope you can do that. Okay. So, Looks like Paula, did you? <laughs> Introduce yourself again, please. Thanks. So the HR director. Um, I'd like to, I guess, address um, the salaries and wages over, I've not, I've been the HR director since, really in this position since November, and I've spent a great deal of time doing comparisons, um, municipalities to municipalities, positions. Um, I've looked at the private sector, public sector, um, and we have a number of positions that are actually underpaid, um, and, there are a number of positions that are um, you know, fairly in line with where they should be. And we have, I think we need to look at um, the longevity piece here. We have staff that have been in place for 18 years, 10 years. We are not, you're not, we don't have entry level employees running the town of Morristown. We have seasoned, educated, Sarah Haskins will speak to her, She's one of the best in the state of Vermont. So you're paying for the best in the state of Vermont. We have Tina, who's been here for 18 years, knows these numbers. She doesn't even need the papers in front of her because she knows the numbers. She knows her job. So I think that what you're paying your staff is in line with what they should be paid. I also think that you have to look at the cost of the turnover. We have had very minimal vacancies um, throughout the town. Um, departments, um, you pay when you start replacing these employee, employees. Um, you pay to educate them. It takes employees one year to learn their job, three years to be really efficient in their job. So I just I think when we're talking about the staff, we really need to to talk at a much higher level because we don't have entry level positions. Um, and there's a quality in the staff that the town of Morristown has, and I can assure you that you are paying for that, that experience, um, and I will continue to do research um, and comparisons um, for the next few weeks and hopefully be able to do a more pres uh, formal presentation. Um, but I just, I, I really think we need to be careful um, uh, about um, not being um, really on board with paying our staff with what they are because they really, they're really worth it. Um, 
It's not, it starts affecting morale too. That it does. I, yes. I can... There's the morale. Um, yeah. The morale around here five years ago when I started um, in the finance department to where it is today is quite different. Um, it's been a very trying time, and people, uh, staff are exhausted trying to do everything that is asked of them. And the structure of the staff that we have has been created by previous administration. And it's also been created by the department heads. They know what they need to run their department. So when they are asking for an additional position, it is because they, it's not because they want to you know, take time off. It's because there is a need for that. Jason needs another police officer. Um, in the local newspaper, he just, you know, create had two major busts. That doesn't happen with a part-time police department. That happens with qualified, solid people in place. Um, so I will, at some point, maybe it's the next, I have to ask my supervisor, but at the next staff uh, select board meeting, I'm, I'm happy to um, provide some data. I'm very data-driven, and I think Don and I have actually shared some of this information. Um, I just... Be careful, be careful with your staff because I just, they're, you. they're your asset. Yeah. And we know that. Um, and the we have at you know, there were significant increases last year, which, you know, are big numbers. And we've asked for this data to just so that we can understand it because what everyone's seeing is just big numbers. So, um, you know, we're all kind of doing little bits of research here and there. Um, but it would be nice to see some comparisons so that we can understand where these numbers came from. I think also yeah. we went, we went through the, Don and I have been through this budget process since October. Well, so I've, we, I've been we've, been, we've been looking at this every, almost every week. So we understand the, the story behind how the budget was developed and how the increases <coughs> were made. So, um, well, I've been I here question. at the meetings, so, but I wasn't here last year when these increases were put into place, um, bringing up the non-union to, to the union. And I'm not questioning it, but it, it, it's just big numbers. And um, we've, we've been asking for the data just so that we can see and understand, um, you know, because right now it's just take, take it on good faith. Well, you know, and we're not doubting that, but I think if you could present the data, it would be huge. It would relay a lot of... Yeah, I'm working on it. Um, Concern. No, and doing research takes time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and on top of doing research, kind of like, you know, yeah. we have our Monday through Friday jobs that yeah. we have to, to get done. And you start doing this research, and then it breaks into the overtime. Yeah. So we are trying to keep those expenses down um, because there's only so much time in a day. So it does take a little bit longer, I think, to pull these owners together. Tina just did an exercise, and I didn't really apologize for speaking for you, Tina, um, and did a a comparison of what our cost of living over a 10-year period was, mm -hmm. and I think the percentage in average was 2.87, I think she has the number. So yes, it's been a couple of years where the cost of living has been, you know, 5% or 6% or 7%. But when you look at what the town employees have received over 10 years, it's not as significant as it may appear. And and I believe it's um, providing those details. I've, I've communicated with three other towns um, there are a 7%, a 5%, and a 7% increase. So again, I don't think that Morrisville's, Morristown's um, cost of living increase is significantly above what other towns are doing. But I will work, continue to work on getting that done. Again, just to, the, the, a lot of these increases happened last year, so that's why I guess it's a little, we assume the data's there. And that's what I guess, you know, some of these increases are, you know, the salaries have been 24% to 30%. Again, I'm not saying that's not, we're just asking for some information as to, you know, um, what justifies that, that's all. And because we haven't gotten that yet, so. Thank you, Paul. Don. So at this point, it's April 3rd. You're looking, you're not looking for emotions from us tonight. You're not looking for us to make decisions, but you are looking for direction from the board. Well, the direction I'm looking for tonight is the proposals and the options that were presented to you by Tina earlier. Are you good with those as they are, or are you looking to adjust those numbers in any way? Okay. There were, there were only a couple at the end that really were, they're not our suggestion, they are, Tina tried to put some common sense 
the fact that if our operating budget for the, the town is 20 percent then that is what she off you know thinks for an increase to the library if you if you think that's too much of a cut we leave that to you folks as a board to decide and if you wanted to add money back then that's why we can't do any calculations on right. that <laughs> But, so, well, that's so why just I brought to follow up that up a little bit, so, person. you know, we have tonight, we have obviously a special meeting on the 18th, but we're not going to be talking about budgets then. And then we have a meeting on the 24th, and I'm just kind of looking ahead a little bit at mm -hmm. this uh, drop dead deadline. We need to get a budget passed, obviously. We've uh, done some pretty major cutting, some would agree not enough. Others might agree that it is enough. Um, when do we, are we looking to approve, for the board to approve the budget on the 24th? I guess that's my question. Well, I would think at this point that if you're looking at the interviews this week, yep. that there uh, could quite likely be a selection by the end of the week for the fifth member. They would be spooled up, uh, you know, by the staff here as Travis and Laura were. When they came in, uh, we try and catch them up as best we can. As to where the board is, where the budget is, and then you know you would I would see that you could appoint that person uh, at a meeting on the twenty fourth, or perhaps sooner. I think we can do it that Thursday night. <coughs> My understanding is, <coughs> right? That's how it was right. Yeah. They get sworn in, so they would actually be in their chair for the twenty fourth uh, person meeting on the eighteenth. Well, on the eighteenth, yeah. But so they would be here for the twenty fourth. I think on the 24th, Paula can come in with uh, data-driven comparisons, showing where our staff are, their longevity, uh, how that relates to other municipalities and the job market. Because, uh, you know, frankly, if we lose a position, we need to backfill it, and mm -hmm. yeah, you got to be market ready for that. So, so I don't know where the rest, <coughs> rest of the board stands, but I'm I'm ready to give, you know, Tina and Eric some direction and get ready for that next meeting on the 24th if that's where i mean are, are you guys ready to to you know, maybe begin to think about that i had one i think sort of large additional thought that hasn't really been touched on um i, I agree with what paula said about the pay raises and i've sort of come around to that that train of thought as well um you know cost of living raises are a double-edged sword you, you get you get it low when it's low you get it high when it's high um i think we should talk about vacancies in newly proposed positions though um, by my count we've got two highway vacancies now um, we have a patrol vacancy we're proposing a new patrol position we're proposing to increase a rec position we don't necessarily need to cut them but can any of them be pushed back can we delay hiring can we can we wait to fill the highway vacancies until october when we're closer to the winter when the need's greatest can we push one of the police positions back to a Jan 1 start date? Can we push the rec position back to a Jan 1 start date? Can we get creative without eliminating positions by delaying the start dates and see what impact that can have on the budget? Those are good thoughts. Um, I mean, I know working with Jason, I have a feeling I know where the police department's going to fall on this or where our chief is going to fall on this. I. I think it's That's worth, an interesting I think it's thought. Part of the discussion. I think it's part. I think it's part of the discussion, especially you know. I don't want to put Kevin on the spot right now, but maybe that's something for Kevin to think about. You know, postponing some. One sec. <laughs> uh, postponing some, some, uh, some filling of positions and and you know creating some uh, creating some dollars there. Or maybe, yeah. maybe we could get some scenarios from staff of if we, you know, if we do delay the start dates to various phases, you know, what, what impact does that have on the budget? Uh, you know, beyond that, I think what could be helpful for the public, um, you know, I was trying to think about this myself too. We're talking 8.7% salary increase. I, I don't know what the exact figure is here. I know that personnel typically makes up like 40, 50% of the general fund budget. If we're talking 8.7% on half the budget, you know, are we, are we really only talking like a four to 5% budget increase that's being driven by the salary increase? All of our salaries, I did that because you asked for it last time and I forgot to mention it. Okay. All of our salaries comprise 3.74% of the overall budget. So it's not a huge yeah, figure. I was thinking like 4%. Yes. That's sort of where my head ended up at is, you know, I understand the frustrations on the salary increases. I was frustrated as well, but it's not, it's three point seven percent. It's very much in line with where my head was at. It's not a huge portion. It's not a huge driving factor on this budget. It really isn't. 
Um, Thank you, so Travis. You got it. I'm Terry Thrown, I'm going yeah. Howard Street. Yeah. Um, I know everybody is concerned about salaries, and I am too. But one of the <coughs> things, in addition to salaries, that drives the budget are the benefits insurance, health care, things like that. On the insurance issue, have we gone out and asked for other prices from other insurance providers? I think, do we get our insurance from VLTC? We get our, uh, like our liability insurance and, um, you know, workers comp, that kind of thing through VLCT. And they do have pretty good rates. They give, uh, they end up giving back like a discounted amount every year. I know it's $330,000 in this budget, but for all the town's liability, workers comp, unemployment, that's not ridiculous considering the amount of employees we have. Um, as far as health insurance is concerned, we haven't had anybody in HR position until Paula in November, which is too late to go out and figure out what kind of health insurance plans are out there. So I know she intends to do something with that. Top of the list. Yeah, but um, I will also say that when we have our health insurance plan years ago, we picked a plan with a high deductible with this health reimbursement account added onto it and the health reimbursement account helps people pay the high deductible therefore we pay less in premium and all of that money that the hra has retains to be town money so it actually helps reduce the budget um, this year we only had to fund 55 percent of the overall hra because we have money in there that helps to reduce it so, I mean, it, our, we did a work on it before, but there is plenty of room for work again. It's just a timing issue. So, I mean, I'm sure that Paula intends to do some stuff on that. Um, I don't know what else you mean. Is that, does well, that answer is, your question? That answers part of it. Um, is there enough time for her to get a quote from her company to find out what, the, you know, uh, get another, another price? Is there, is there enough time to do that to help reduce the budget? My experience is that it's like dealing with a car salesman. I hope nobody hears a car salesman. <laughs> but that you go there, and if you say, I like that car, and I'm going to pay the sticker price, they'll be glad to sell it to you. If you say, hey, I saw this at another dealer down the road, and it was $5,000 cheaper, what can you do for me? They'll do something for you. They don't want to lose right. you. Uh, right, I understand There's what a you're lot saying. Of negotiations that go on. I've been mm -hmm. doing that when, when I was uh, employed for over 45 years, and I've seen it. Uh, mm -hmm. Worked in a construction company, and, and our <clears throat> ability to, to bid work was based upon our cost. <coughs> to get our cost down. Another thing is workers' compensation. It's usually very high. That's based on your experience. Mm -hmm. If you have accidents, you can have a high experience. High experience factor, a high, a high multiplier. Yes. You're not going to get any different price on uh, workers' compensation insurance by shopping around. The way you reduce that is by having a safe workplace and reducing accidents over <clears throat> a three year or longer period. That's how long it takes. So I'm just asking if there are things that, uh, since the benefits are a large part of of employment, whether there's anything we haven't done that we could be doing to help reduce the overall budget. I, I agree with you. I don't, Paula doesn't have time to shop health insurance now. Not only that, but we also have two unions that we have to get to agree to whatever plan we have. So it's not something that will immediately happen, but it can happen. Um, and I know that the, uh, especially the highway department, they have uh, all kinds of trainings that they go to and they do <coughs> safety meetings weekly. So we have been making strides to try and reduce any workers' comp claims. And in my opinion, being here as long as I have, they have gone down considerably, but we keep striving to do that. We're trying to save as much money as we can. Do you know your uh, modification uh, factors? 
I don't know right off the top of my mind. Um, every division is a different multiplier. Depends on, you know, obviously police is going to be more expensive right. than I am. Right. So it, it all depends on what department you're in as to how much you're charged. It's not a flat fee around for everybody. Agreed. The classification. Right. Right. And each one is different. But yes. As an overall, as a company, when I used to work for, you know, I worked full time, the company had a modification. If we were bidding work, we had to tell the owner what our modification mm -hmm. factor was. If it's over one, that's not good. If it's under one, very good. Yeah. I'm not sure right off the top of my mind. I'd have to look at the bill. Okay. Sorry. Thank you. Uh, Selena? Thank you. On Zoom? I'll try to be brief because I know it's getting late. Um, I just want to put out there that um, I won't be voting for any budget that has a bigger increase than 10%. And I know a lot of people feel the same way. Uh, I really wish the select board would focus more on the taxpayers out there. We have over 5,000 people living in our community and half of those people have a household income of $58,000 or less. And um, we cannot support the increases that you are putting out there. Um, right now, um, having income adjustments really helps, but one of the groups that does not get an income adjustment is farmers. And if you looked at how much taxes farmers are paying to the town of Morrisville, you would probably be amazed. We do not have an income adjustment. And as Laura pointed out, we're one of the businesses that are not doing well. There's not a single farm in Morrisville that is doing well, and we haven't been doing well for a long time. Um, we've taken some drastic measures to get our taxes down. Um, last year, we gave away one of the trailers that's on our property. Could we have used that? Yes, but we need, needed to get our taxes down. We also tore down an historic house that was on our property because we were having to pay about $800 a year in taxes for something that we couldn't use. We tore that down. With your 12% increase last year, our taxes still went up with two houses less on the farm. Um, so I really want to see the budget at 10% or less of an increase. Um, I really don't think um, the, the board is taking it seriously, the amount of people that voted against the, the increase. I really think that you need to to listen to what the people said with that vote and, and make some huge adjustments. Um, we're also even looking at even more drastic measures to try to get our taxes down for next year. And if it's more than 10%, it's gonna be, gonna be significant. Thank you. Thank you. Ed? We can get two ends up there. Ed Wilson. Ed Wilson, Morrisville. Um, I just wanna, point out something that that I don't think has been said. I don't hear any complaints on the services. I don't hear complaints about the jobs that any people are doing. I hear no complaints about the quality of people. And I don't hear anything that says these people aren't worth it. Let them go down the road. Let them go. What I said a couple of weeks ago, what Jamie Jarrett just said, what Julia said earlier is that the increases you're say, seeing or that you're proposing are not commensurate with what is happening in the community. Just like Selena just said. Um, and Laura talked about businesses that um, are hurting. I, I don't hear a lot about businesses that are that close to closing, but I do business with a lot of different kinds of businesses and we aren't thriving. Our business at the beginning of COVID saw a 93% reduction in revenue. Not profit, not, not net profit, not, um, it was 93% because we're in the tourist industry and you're seeing a lot of people 
around you that are involved in the tourist industry. Quite frankly, it's come back. A lot of it's come back. But you do not make up a decrease in revenue like that in a couple of years. There's a lot of hangovers from that, whether it's debt that has been taken on or other measures that had to be taken. So it, I don't see this as being a personal thing. I know the people that I work with at the town are doing a good job. I know that they're professional and I believe they work hard. I'm just telling you that the salaries are going to be a lightning rod because it's not what the rest of the communities, the community is seeing. Thank you. Thanks, Ed. I'll go with Ed Lowentine. I don't know who iPad is. Go ahead, Ed Lowentine. Ed, you need to unmute. Unmute, okay, there we go. Can you hear me? Yes. Yep. All right, thank you. Um, I'll really try to be brief. What I haven't seen here is an orderly start to the process of adjusting the budget from the, the time before we started arguing about it. If there were to be increases, uh, it, it would have been great to have a public, publicly available justification. Some of the conversations we're just starting to have now might be easier or might not even be necessary if the finance department and all those who wanted increases had started accumulating uh, uh, evidence for their requests before the original increased budget was done. Um, uh, and I have to stop you right there because I mentioned this already. We've been working on this budget since October. It's been videotaped. That. We've discussed it ad nauseum. And to, to say that we're not doing it is just upsetting and it makes me very angry. Please, please just let me finish here. All right, in talk of salaries, People are saying, I, I get the uh, implication that the people that want to keep the fully increased salaries or the full increases in place are making an assertion that uh, if we don't give them the entire full amount of the proposed increase, they're going to quit. And I don't see any evidence for that. Indeed, the town staff, the operating functions of this town are 100% across the board, well done. We have a particularly well-functioning government at uh, or town at the operational level, but to insist that they get the full value of the originally increased, uh, uh, originally asked for salary increase uh, may not be entirely supported. So that's just an assertion that we're going to lose people. I think that would have to be demonstrated. I would have liked to see representatives from police, fire, and rescue here tonight. They um, are here. They are here. Oh, good. Oh, good. I would have loved to hear uh, them speak. Um, to my mind, the bottom line priorities of a government at any level, the irreducible ones, our infrastructure and public safety. Uh, all the other functions are much more negotiable than that. So taking little bits and pieces of small percentages, for example, out of police like the uh, enhanced communication, uh, it's not a lot of money and I see that that may have been cut unless I got that wrong. Um, it, it, the recreation increase seems the least likely <coughs> to me. Does that necessarily have to be a governmental function? Our recreational uh, um, amenities are already quite large. Uh, why can't we go outside the confines of just more dollars or fewer dollars and look at more inventive ways of doing things? Travis briefly mentioned a couple of these things. And that would be the direction we should be going in and should have been going in from the start is you go to these departments and say, as things stand based on your requests, we're going to have this much increase. How, what can you propose to us that'll bring it down to XYZ number? 
I think Travis mentioned a couple of them. I think now is the time to be going to the departments, the actual functioning members, and get them involved. In uh, yep, yeah, thank, Ed, thank you, because that's exactly what's been going on. So okay. thank you. I'm going to go on to the iPad person. It's not being it's not being publicized. If it has, I haven't seen that in the information provided to the public. So I don't I don't know who the iPad person is. So that's that's my if you're doing that, I'm not seeing the results of that in the lines of the budget yet or any publicity about exactly how that's happening. If you want the budget passed, you need to engage the people that are going to vote it up or down. Thank you. I don't know who the iPad person is, if you'd like to speak. You have your hand up? If you're speaking, thank Hello? you. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Hi, uh, my name is Steve Hemenway. Um, I just got, I have two questions. Um, first question is um, with the recreation. Uh, when we had our children trying to go there, it was $50 a day per child um that is just does that pay the salary of this person i mean that was unaffordable to us it ended up being like a thousand dollars um and i you know just unaffordable for for normal people my second question is i asked this at the last meeting but it kind of really got confused or didn't really get answered but with all the new apartments in town like this one next to tomlinson's there's like five, six apartments next, a uh, little further down towards the, the traffic light. Um, there's all these apartments um, behind Fred's Energy. There's a, a apartment building by Maplefields, all these apartments. What tax base have they added to the town? If you could answer that for me, that'd be awesome. Thank you. And thank I don't you. know that's anybody in this room that can answer that question. Charlie? You can answer it at a high level. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's. How about a ballpark? Can you we give don't me a ballpark? Know not no. I wouldn't. I wouldn't have a clue. Yeah. Some of them aren't even occupied yet. They're all mostly all of those. I, I see cars. I see cars parked at them all the time. Like the one by Maple Fields. There's cars there. They're, you know, the people in the ones by the traffic light there uh, hmm. by Tomlinson's. People living there. There's um, um kind of a. Yeah, they just. In the base has that resulted in. There's um again I was on the DRB and permitted was in the permitting process um they're starting to come in but most of the development is still going on um nick donza's that you're talking about behind fred's there there may be one or two that there's they're starting to get populated um and people are starting to move in but we're not you know i don't know enough of that yeah, too much about it but it's we're ways out that um on is, there no, is, there no, is there no tax base revenue unless somebody moves in? There well, the, is. Yeah. The, there is an assessed value of, of any any yeah. structure that's construction begins on April 1st or beyond. There is an assessment made on the value of that even during construction. Uh, when it's completed, when the year is completed, uh, then the full value of the property is assessed. Thank you. Okay, thank you. So we, thank do you. Drop, we do drop tax dollars when they're under construction, yes. Yeah. And, and We've just not seen the full impact of it yet. It's Correct, but we saw a 2.11% increase in the grand list. There you go. That is substantial it's for huge. any municipality. It's a huge increase. Yeah, that's great. And what about the rec program question? What? Yeah, that's, so he was talking about the fees oh. for the rec program. Oh. Oh. I, so I can tell you that we no longer charge a daily rate uh, it was very problematic with cash swapping hands up there and accountability. It was a nightmare. We have only a seasonal rate and a weekly rate uh, at this point. Um, I think so if I doesn't pay for it. Okay, so so that that seasonal rate does that does not pay for the um, for that staff. You know, it, it, the it does help. I mean, it's about. In, what was the income? Ninety thousand, eighty-five to yeah, ninety thousand. Close to a hundred thousand dollars in income, but it doesn't pay for everything. No, it fully covers our um, our counselor staff. Okay. okay. We have twenty counselors. Twenty. Okay. All right. Well, thank you very much. 
Thank you. Okay, I'd like to um, have an approval for the warrants. <coughs> a motion to approve the warrants. Do we have? Are you ending the, the yes. budget discussion? Yes. Do staff have the direction they need for the next? Can we yep. summarize so. the direction? I think we did. Did we not? Well, I know that Paul's got some more homework to do. Tina has some homework to do as well on the recreation department. Um, break out there. Uh, you know, we're going to use figures uh, that Travis has suggested about staggering the beginnings uh, of these new positions versus starting them on 1 July. We'll take a look at the impact there and if we can reduce things further. And play with the fund balance a little bit? Yeah, the fund balance is basically, Tina figured today is for every $80,000 the 1% drop in our budget yeah. proposal. So um, I We'll take a closer look at that to see what our comfort level is as far as what the, the money that's in there covers. Our accountants have, our, that do our uh, audit um, have suggested anywhere from a 5 to 15 percent, but it's, it's more like a 10 to 15 percent uh, fund balance that is there for uh, undesignated purposes. They're there for the emergencies. Yeah. So we have never carried that large uh, of a fund balance. So uh, while it's healthy uh, right now, I can tell you the cost for the, the, the October 9th, 19 yeah. storm. Was well, it was almost a half a million dollars. So, so it won't go long. We don't want to, we don't want to dive too far into it, but I think it is healthy enough, as Tina says, to, uh, to look at using some of that money to help defray some of this. So I think it feels like we have direction. I think so. Just yeah. wanted to make sure everybody was good. Yeah. 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 I Thank you. I want to make. Formal. I just want to be clear. We have direction too. Yeah. And yeah. I just want to reiterate: if we can get this down to fourteen percent, and from there four percent help from the grant list, that brings it down yeah. to the ten percent that Selena is talking about. Yeah. And just so everyone knows, I've said that, I said this a lot back in January. <coughs> If we get it to 10 percent the actual burden on the taxpayer is 40 percent of that so that's four percent that's that's the bottom line that's what the tax bill will go up so um i just want to just want to you know if throw it doesn't that in pass there. it's going to cost us a lot more money if it doesn't pass we're carrying into the new budget year yeah. most likely timing wise so, well, we'll a, a follow-up on on don's statement that that if you can get it down to 10 percent if you people get to better show where that money is going where the included in the back the, the the salaries and the wages that it's only 3.9 percent give as much information as you can out to the voters so that they understand it when we began this a couple months ago and you said that the, the wages and the salary took up majority of the of the of the budget and, and uh, now we find out it's 3.9. Mm -hmm. That that would go a <coughs> long way to, to the to difference. Be, if I just stop quick before we get that information out, yeah. The 3.9 percent, 4 percent figure that was said tonight is accounts for the increase okay. to the budget, Correct. not Correct. the total not impact the total of budget. salaries and benefits to the budget is more like 40 percent. Okay, then that's more okay. reason to have that out to us so that we can see it, so we can present it to the people who are going to vote. For it. You got 1,441 people that said that was too high. I'm not sure you're going to, even at 10%, are going to get enough to pass it. But if the more information you get out to us that we can look at it, the better chances of it getting passed. Thank you, Tom. I, I'd like to move on to the, you, to the warrants, okay. approval for the warrants motion. I'll make a motion we approve the warrants. I'll second. Got a uh, motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, town administrator's report. I would like to report that I was absent for the last two weeks. <laughs> well, good for you. <laughs> Lovely uh, tan. <laughs> when I came back, uh, very pleased with the progress that was made, the work that the staff has done. They have dug deep on this. Tina's found creative ways. The financing on the trucks was one that we hadn't considered, but this is the this is her world that she functions in. The uh, the department heads, the police department, recreation, all those departments, fire department, every one of them have been looking at the budgets, continuing to find 
things they can do without, but well, they got, we got to maintain that basic level of service. And I couldn't be more pleased with the staff and, uh, and the way things went in my absence. It just speaks to their professionalism and their ability to function. And, so, Thank you. you. Thank you, Eric. Um, select board concerns. I'm going to start with Travis. Sure. I'm on the wrong end of the table. I always have to go first here. I can start with Don. <laughs> no, I mean, no, okay, I'll go first. Um, I wanted to echo what Tom said because I've been pushing for that for quite some time. You know, I think regardless of where we end up here budget wise, we need to do a massive amount of outreach and education. Um, I think I have a different definition of transparency than what others may have. Um, I, I don't see transparency as hosting regular meetings. I don't see it as telling people they can watch a three hour YouTube video. I don't, I don't have time to watch a three hour YouTube video when I'm at home trying to spend time with my kid after work. Um, we need to put this in layman's terms. We need to put it in a, in a way that people can understand it. We need to do FAQs. We need to do budget summaries. We need to do budget narratives. We need to look at what some other towns are doing. Um, I've shared some examples with Eric and Tina of, of good um, outreach I think I've seen out there. Um, and just being accessible, whether it's a coffee chat on the weekend where one of us, I'd be happy to, to go sit for two, three hours on the weekend and answer budget questions. Um, I do think there's a lot more that we can and need to do for outreach and education on this budget if it has any chance of passing this time around. Um, so that's on the budget. Jumping to the board um, interviews and appointments and potential appointments this weekend. Um, keep this brief. We do have the potential motion for executive session on both of those agendas. Um, we'll see how that plays out when we get to those meetings. Um, but I do want to put it out there publicly. I would support having those interviews in open session, not looking to have a conversation here. This wasn't warned on the agenda, but I do want it out there. Um, I would very much prefer that those interviews happen in open session. And I'll just leave it at that. Laura? Um. I had the pleasure of meeting with Bill on uh, EMC uh, liaison um, and uh, unbelievably impressed with what's going on over there. Um, again, and I also met with Jason, who I'm not a liaison, but um, the, the state of this town, not to be pessimistic, but um, I'm a huge advocate of these folks, first of all, because I may need to call Bill one day to come save me. <laughs> as I am aging, um, but these, you know, these public services, we are unbelievably lucky to have these two gentlemen. Um, the caliber of what they bring to this town is amazing. Um, having, I've lived, you know, and dealt with all over Vermont and all over the country, um, and the, the level of expertise and the staffing that they are able to keep is unbelievable. Um, again, I go for prevention. Um, and and uh, just a very quick story, having been in New York City, uh, we were told, a friend of mine dated a policeman, and they were told on New Year's um, Eve for the big ball dropping, I lived on 42nd Street, um, when they were told that you do not pull police off of Times Square during um, the ball drop because just having a police presence is such a deterrent for a crime. Um, so I think that where we are right now, we are kind of the gateway to the um, Northeast Kingdom, um, makes us a very vulnerable position. Um, so I just wanted to say thank you to these gentlemen um, and to uh, our EMTs. Um, the, the, uh, what we're looking at for anybody who's following state the state is, um, it will not be legislation, but they're going to try to tag it on in to add $20 million to EMT training, um, which would be incredible because currently the system is a little wonky. Um, I'm hoping that we can have some direction from town to try to get some of that funding in. We have a great facility over there. We have Copley Hospital. It would be great to see if we can somehow corral some of that funding and become a EMT training center of sorts. Um, Eric has already started a great program with Bill, um, looking at our relationships and our contracts with uh, the other towns, which will continue on um, that, you know, because we're a lot of the towns surrounding us are dependent on our services. Um, so there's been questions about how it generates revenue. So that's uh, ongoing conversation. 
um, that we're looking at. And so I just wanted to say thank you and let everybody know that we're so incredibly lucky um, to have both of these departments. Thank you. Don? Well, I'll echo what Laura said. I agree. We do have, um, we have two great departments. In fact, I think we have great departments across the board. I want to, I, I'll say this really quickly because I already said the, the details of it, but going to the, the breakfast with the legislators this morning was just once again a reminder of how important our workforce is, the workforce that we have. And many people have commented tonight on the uh, individuals that are working for this town and what a great job they're doing. And I think it's really important for all of us to say that to them, go out there, give them a hug, shake their hands, remind them. Because, um, you know, I've certainly seen morale drop here in the last couple of months and uh, we, need to, we need to let them know how much we really do appreciate them. You know, Working on this budget is tough. It's been tough for many, many months. We're not done yet. And, uh, and they're the ones that are really taking the brunt of it. You know, we've got to remember that. It's, uh, they're getting all this work done for us. And there's a lot of work that gets done in this town. You know, I get up in the morning and my road's nicely sanded in the morning. I, you know, I appreciate that. Uh, my community is much safer because of the police department in this town. And you know, Bill, I might be giving you a call someday. Actually, my <laughs> wife might be giving you a call someday. <laughs> my wife might be yeah. giving you a call, Denny, one of these days. I hope not, but I hope you don't have to visit my property. But, but really, yeah. very sincerely, appreciation goes out to all of you folks for all that you've done. And I'm sorry you guys have to live through what we're living through right now. Thank you, Don. Um, I'd like to take a few minutes just to share some stories about Eric. I know he's been under fire for several months when we do the salary, and he doesn't he doesn't um, he doesn't share some of the work that he does that nobody hears about. There was a uh, a homeless vet living in our community who someone came in to complain about him. Eric went to find him and spent some time with them and to talk with them and to try to, to broker uh, some services for him and or get him to um, take a little bit better care of himself. And um, I don't think too many other town administrators you would find going out doing that kind of thing. He also, um, one of a, Kathy Chaffee, she came to our select board meeting. She was complaining because people were turning around in her, her driveway. She wanted us to fix that. Eric went down to her house, talked to her, tried to help her figure out a, a way to solve that issue. I don't think you'd find very many town administrators taking the time out of their day to go and help solve a problem like that. So Eric does a lot of these things behind the scenes that none of us see, none of us hear about, but um, he does excellent, good work. Thank you, Eric. Thank you. And thank you to Paula and Tina and Judy um, for all the work that you've been doing. And I know other people in the office are doing that too, but thank you so much for the work you've been doing. Um, and next, community concerns. Anyone have anything? Sir, would you introduce yourself when you come up, please? I'm Alex Sear. I live over on Foundry Street. Um, I noticed for the special meeting, the reconsideration of the sidewalk project is um, Article 1, although the question of whether or not further budget items can be put on um, Australian Pat ballot is um, Article 2. I think during the special for meeting, there should be a motion to postpone consideration of Article 1 until our, after Article 2 has been um, considered and decided upon so that people have that information and when the time comes, people will support that. I think possibly, and I could be wrong, Sarah's not here, I think you can bring that up from the floor at that time? I, I will. But, I don't know. Um, just so that. Um, yeah, okay. People will know what I'm doing 
or yeah. perhaps yeah. on the board. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Is Chef Smith going to be there moderating the uh, the meeting, like it would be a town meeting day? Awesome. Thank awesome. you. Thank you. Tony, did someone in the back have their hand up? Okay. <clears throat> Travis and Don, I talked to you both about the roads in this town. They're totally in disarray. And I want to, as a taxpayer, I'd like to know about having an investigation on what goes on and why the roads cannot be fixed. I only live on Cody Hill. I have several antique cars that I can't get off the hill. And here it is, the season's coming. Why can't the road be graded and ditch? It goes on for weeks and weeks and weeks. Thank you. Thank you, Tony. I am a taxpayer. Anyone else? Yes. Sir. Oh, you'll be next, Tom. Yep, thank you. Jamie Jarrett. Um, I do have a concern regarding the community, but I'd like to do it uh, privately with you all instead okay. of in an open meeting. That's possible. I don't know if that's. Have to do it. We can't do it all at once. No more than two at a time. Be, yeah. Because it would be a violation of the meeting law. I'd be happy to meet with you one on one if you want to reach out. Uh, sure. We just have. We Absolutely. Can't do it. Yeah. My email's on the. Do you have my town email? Do you want to shoot I mean, me an email? We can set a time to chat. I mean, two. That goes for me too. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we can step out. After. Well, anyways, would, we'll figure it out. I would prefer that if we could step out. Sure. Okay. Like yeah, and sure. as Eric said, it has to be like two at a time because of open meeting laws. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. It can be just two of you. Yeah. Okay. All the people that work for this town, this isn't about them. I don't think we we all know that they the excellent work they do. Every one. I don't have a problem with any of the parties in this office. Uh, with, the, with the, the staffs or anybody, and uh, they do a super job. I think they're one of the best in the state. So they're always friendly and helpful. And so to to think that we're we're it's, it's this argument about wages or salaries against them, it's it's not about them at all. It's about whether we can afford to pay them. That's all it is. And to change something real quickly, the the vote that you have coming up with this Thursday on the added select board person. It seems like it's really, really rapid. And we, we don't, as far as the, the residents, don't really know who they are yet. We're just beginning to learn. Uh, we've seen the names and trying to figure out who they are, what, what their concerns are, what they see as visions for the town. And there's a couple I can not find any information about. What I'm asking, and, it's, and I know the timing is, is that if you could put that off a week to have your interviews, but have a voting a week later so that people can, uh, the residents can take a look at these candidates and maybe email you their, their views on them and just get a better feel for who is going to take this very important seat. And I know that they're under time constraints and everything, but. I would hope you take that into consideration. Thanks, Tom. Okay. Um, is there any other business? Is there someone? Oh, I'm sorry. Sat for a long time. Hi, Evelyn Throne, Howard Street. Um, three things, basically. One is very short. Uh, I do appreciate the work you've all done. I totally agree with Travis, the idea that the information is all, almost all out there, or virtually all out there. It's digesting it that's really hard. And my husband, he's a civil engineer, so he, he look, can look through all this stuff. I can't. So I appreciate it simplified. Um, and uh, yeah, we just moved here like a year and a half ago. But I, one thing that I did notice right away, and I'm not gonna, I'll probably be talking about it like next year, because this year's a little <laughs> tough to talk about anything, um, is that they, they changed all the lighting in the town, and it's, uh, it's LED lights, which are very great for the environment, but it is difficult because it can go straight into your windows, it, it blares your eyes, it's 
a lot of the lighting is um, it's difficult. Like my one neighbor said, she bought blackout curtains because the way the the, the street light comes mm -hmm. right into her window. So I maybe next year I'll gauge what people's thoughts are and come up with that. Um, the third thing is that we live along uh, where Washington and Congress meet. I mean, yeah, and um, and it's kind of difficult because the people do speed. Uh, obviously, they speed down that street. Uh, I don't. I see it with with Maple and uh, Congress being so straight that traffic calming would be difficult. You know, putting islands or anything like that. But those lights that that flash the um, the different speed limits, they really do work. I looked at the studies; they work. So I really, really appreciate that. I think it's a safety issue and it's a quality of life issue. So um, I know you have a lot on your plate now, but like put these in the back of your head if you could. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Is there somebody else? Okay. Kathy, um, Kathy. Yes, uh, Kathy Chafee, can I just speak for one quick <laughs> Sure. Um, I just, I want to say, um, I personally, and I don't think a lot of people have anything against anybody. Um, I do respect Eric. I mean, I see him in other places and I do respect him. But what um, we need to remember and consider, and I realize in life, some have more than others, that's life. But most of the people out there, including myself, only got a 2% increase this year. Um, so we are struggling. Um, I don't begrudge anybody anything. I really don't. But when most of the townspeople got, you know, maybe a 3% increase, it's very hard. Um, it's very hard for us to swallow that. But I don't think anybody just hates anybody or does not just dis dislikes anybody. Um, it has nothing to do personally with anybody on the road crew or anyone. Um, <laughs> I'm mean, just, I haven't portrayed that to any of them. And yes, Eric did help me and he did come up and I had to call the police about a month and a half, maybe two months ago. And they did help me, but the problem is not solved. So he did come out and try to help me, but our problem is still not solved. It's, it's an everyday occurrence. And I mean, some days, the day I call the police, I lose it. So I have to call the police, but I shouldn't have to use their services for that either. So I just want to say that just please remember a lot of us really only got two or three percent and I don't dislike anybody down there and I don't treat anybody with disrespect, but thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Kathy. Um, any other business this evening? One positive note. We're getting a new canine um, yes. puppy that they're training. Oh, cool. Right. Which we love. I <laughs> hope she's nicer than Nova. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, maybe next uh, board meeting we can bring them in. Oh, that'd be sweet. Yeah. That'd be yeah. sweet. Great. I love K-9s. Any other business, Eric? There's not. All right. Um, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. I'll second. I'll make, um, it. I'll make it. Or <laughs> Thank No, you, you got to oh, try. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Are there two particular people you prefer to see? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Don made, made the motion. Laura second. Sorry. I've been talking to people too and uh...